Hey everybody, Josh Airviener down here at A1 RV today with a sharp two slide Cougar. It is about 8,525 pounds, yet it has a big living room super slide and a full bedroom slide, which considering that weight category, not too bad. This would be a really solid option for like a three quarter ton tower or goer. But what's also nice is the floor plan really lends itself to like some long term destination extended season kind of camping too. So this could really appeal to a number of different people. And if you've seen any of my videos, you know I am personally a big time super fan of rear kitchens because it gives us that feeling of like big wide open space. It's almost like we have multiple slides back here, but it is in fact only one living room super slide because we are just, just covered up with huge windows. And that's what I like about these. If you take the same uh, rear window and rear chairs that you find in a common rear living room, but you put them over here, we've got a rear kitchen, but now we've got the same seating, except we have more windows on the campsite of our RV. And it's a more social seating arrangement where everything is focused inward a little bit. Rear kitchens just always feel more people focused to me. They're more inclusion than exclusion, if that makes sense in their application. Now, uh, maybe furniture is a little dated, but big deal. You know, little slip covers for things like furniture. That's, that's something a lot of people don't think about. You can like just Google upholstery shop near me. Just be like, hey Siri, where's an upholstery shop near me? And it'll jump right to something for you. And you would be shocked how inexpensive it is to do things like get a couple new skin coverings for some things. I don't think this one needs it though. Nothing's wore out. The RV's in great shape overall, actually. There's a, a little bit of weathering on some of the decals outside, but that's cosmetic. And that's like the worst I've been able to find. You know, if I'm being ultra picky here, this thing looks pretty sharp. Smart details too. Like I like that set of power outlets under the dining table right there. I think in today's world, that'd be really handy for a lot of phone chargers. I think that was probably originally thinking like, Hey, what if we put a coffee pot or something over there, but it's always useful. And you can see there is like a little, uh, throw rug down there that they have rolled up as well. I've found a couple things in the RV that kind of lead me to believe that these folks might just be done camping after a number of years doing it. And Hey, that happens sometimes, you know, after a while, eventually we all stop doing something. I know that I don't do the things I used to. Like I used to do this little tough mutter warrior dash runs and I was never good at it. I, I needed a lot of help, but I had fun. I hurt the next day and the day after that and the day after that and the day after that. And then I started to feel a little less hurt. <laughs> uh, but you know, I like McDonald's more than I like treadmills. That being said, I still spend time on the treadmill and I still spend time at McDonald's. <laughs> now, rear kitchens have some of the best storage per capita you can get out of any style of floor plan. And you notice here, it actually extends all the way up above these rocking chairs. I think I want to start up here above those rocking chairs because, uh, you know, the, the storage just keeps, just keeps on going. This is a classic Cougar thing. They would put this kind of lazy Susan thing in the corner, some of these big overhead cabinets so that you wouldn't lose stuff up in those corners, which was easy to do. And you might kind of wonder, that's neat. Why don't I see that on the new Cougars today? It's because more and more and more RV brands have gotten away from those peninsula style overhead uh, cabinets. Like you see how that cabinet kind of sticks out. I kind of like it because first of all, more storage, am I right? But secondly, it creates almost like a room within a room because back here is now officially the kitchen. You're crossing a divider line in a sense, but more people wanted more open space and they wanted lighter weight RVs and cabinetry has sometimes been shaved back in some of the modern RVs. And that's kind of one of the uh, examples of it right there. That thing in the modern market's mostly gone. Massive skylight back here though. And even without like a lot of lighting back here, it is just so light and bright and open and airy. It's awesome. I love that dedicated pantry space, some good drawer capacity down here, and a dedicated wastebasket place. Always handy. Plus there is additional storage below the sink right there. Overall, I think they got a, a really sweet package and a lot of storage going on in this one. Now, refocusing in on the living room, I think, uh, you know, actually, before I do that, give me just a moment. I want to close all this up because it's kind of distracting me all wide open like that. There you go. Give you a nice look at the living room without doors hanging wide open in front of the camera all over the place. And this, again, is what I love about these. Everything focuses toward the center of the RV. It's people's faces facing faces, if you're thinking about it that way. And I like that. Now, 
A rear kitchen could just as well. You don't have to use this for a, an entertainer's party floor plan, but everybody knows the party ends in the kitchen, right? That's where the food and the drinks are, so everyone ends up standing around the kitchen countertop, and that's where everybody ends up hanging out. So this is a really cool floor plan for entertainer-type folks. But what's also nice is if you're just looking for some privacy, you can just pull the shades down. You don't have to have your friends over and neighbors and everything else. You can just use this yourself. No big deal. And a uh, coat closet right by the door. Thank you very much. And I'm suspecting that little rope contraption I'm looking at right here, that looks like something someone might have used for uh, walking a dog. I don't have confirmation of that. I suspect... There was a pet in this RV at some time. Um, I don't see where Mr. Doggy, Mr. Kitty, whatever, chewed anything up or, you know, peed on stuff. I don't see any of that. So it appears that they were very well-mannered, which, looking at the condition of the RV, that does not surprise me whatsoever. And I could be wrong on the whole pet thing. If you need some more confirmation of that, please give our team down here at A1RV a call. We are always happy to dig into some extra details. Call the owners of this RV on your behalf for you. Very often when I'm recording this, I'm doing campsite CSI, and I don't have a ton of information available to me, so I'm, I'm using kind of clues, blues clues, to put this stuff together. Speaking of blue, I like that bedspread. Uh, that's sharp. I like the colors on that. It feels very uh, vacation-y, light and airy, you know, disconnecting from our everyday work reality. Now, that's a 60 by 80 queen, and if we're looking over here, next to that breeze window and below it, there is a side stand. Now, if you wanted to remove that, I believe that you could make this a king bed, like a 70 by 80 king, not a true residential king, perhaps, but a 70 by 80 RV king. I think you could make that work pretty fine. Um, great dresser space over here as well, next to that big front closet. Easy reach outlets all over the place. Now, up here, this was made before everybody and their brother had flat screens. So this whole, that, that, TV nook where that fan is, it actually is a slide out almost like a drawer where you could have a TV mounted and then slide and swing it out toward you if you're so inclined. It does not appear the previous owners did that. Instead, they put a fan on it so that they had some air blown over them. I do the exact same thing. Are there any other fan sleepers out there? I don't even have to have air blowing on me. I love that white noise though. That's actually one of the things like if I do ever sleep in a hotel instead of a, a camper, I really, and I mean really, miss that fan. But, it, you know, it's like, I know that they have, like, white noise apps and stuff for your phone, but it's it's not the same. I love hearing that roar of the fan because it just drowns everything out and it makes my brain disconnect. Uh, this is what I'm going to call a very uh, traditional split bath upper deck. And that is where the bedroom and the bathroom are kind of one room. But there's some significant benefits to it that uh, are often very underappreciated. First of all, the fact that when you get up in the morning or when you get out of the shower or something, you have plenty of room here where you can stand and get dressed. And full disclosure, there is an unfortunate cold crack on the linoleum right here. And that is just one of those things that I don't care how well built an RV is. With the polar vortex Midwestern weather we've had several times in the last half dozen years, the fact that that's the only signature of it you're seeing right here is pretty awesome. That's pretty amazing. It's a really good indicator that this was well maintained by the previous owners and kept away from the worst of the weather exposure because, I mean, the, the weather gets so cold, I don't, I don't care where you are or what you're doing. It can just have its way with an RV. So if the worst that we say is there's a little fading, a little flaking on a couple of the nose decals and one little cold crack on the floor that if you're looking at it, they actually glued so that it wasn't going to be spreading. They tried to make sure it wasn't going to get any worse than that. They addressed it. In a way, that's a good peek at the ownership of this RV. When this RV needed something, they took care of it. And what's nice is I don't see where it, it has never had leaks. It hasn't had significant damage. It appears to have been very proactively maintained. And I will take an RV that has enjoyed proactive care over reactive maintenance 10 times out of 10. Because it tells me that there's nothing hidden under the skin that I need to worry about. That everything is only skin deep and that I can be confident in what I see knowing that that is the whole story. Now we actually sold this RV to the folks uh, a couple seasons ago. And I think it's in a little bit better shape now than it was then. The, the decals, like I said, as we go around it, you're going to see that it needs maybe a decent uh, bath outside. And I think what I would do is some of the flaky spots on the decals. I would just very carefully, of course, power wash them off get them off there. Whenever people do that, whenever they just blow old decals off of an RV and they just get left with 
effectively just a clean looking exterior, they're always like, huh, that's actually pretty nice. All these Nike Adidas swooshes, uh, actually over here, this side of the RV looks good. So I gotta believe that this was parked facing east and the nose and the door side were facing west. Around the Midwest, that's usually a good indication of weather patterns. Now up front here, somebody must have done some towing with this thing and they upgraded from the traditional fixed pin box to this big, beautiful airbag style air piston trail air pin box here. So if you're gonna do some towing and going, you got that three quarter ton or bigger and you wanna hit the road in style, I think this is something that could work very well for you. Now, you see that uh, pass-through compartment, the basement area open right there. As we get in here, you're actually gonna see sink covers and a countertop extension. Evidently, this is where they had those things stowed for travel, so they weren't banging, bouncing around the inside of the RV. And you also get to see that this thing has a huge open basement. It also has an enclosed heated belly, and this was made during the generation where Cougar had already gone ahead and done the updates, where this is, like a Montana, hot, cold camp rated. Something I didn't mention inside, but I think is worth mentioning, all the windows here open for airflow, which uh, is really nice. Now, another cool thing, this rear bumper, it actually slides out. So right now it's just normal bumper mode where you see a spare tire on it. And that's all it has to be. You never have to do anything else with it. But if you want to, on both sides, you can pull these pins, the rear bumper can slide out a couple feet, and you can use it for transporting bikes, coolers, Maybe a small generator if you want to get off the grid a little bit. Be able to, you know, run the slides, the power awning, the air conditioning. So, now we'll get up on the roof in just a minute, but one more quick note is I've mentioned that, you know, this is very tow and goable. 8,525 pounds, that's, that's easy to tow for, like I said, a lot of three quarters. Now, some people are going to say, well, my one ton can pull 12,000, or nope, not one ton. My half ton can pull 12,000 pounds, and maybe it can. Where I want you to please, please, please use caution here is... If you are looking at half ton towing something like this, remember that up front, we have that full bed slide. That means the nose of this RV has a pretty hefty pin weight. Now you want to compare hitch weight on this RV, which I likely have already listed at the five second mark of this video. I tend to put the specs there. So maybe jump back to the very beginning of the video and check that when we're all done. Oop, the light, there we go, focus camera. And compare that to the payload, not towing, the payload rating of your half ton pickup. And chances are you'll see that is usually the area where most half tons fail when it comes to fifth wheel towing. Most half tons have an engine like a mule. It's just they don't have the suspension of a heavier truck to be able to handle heavier cargo loads being hitched into the bed of them. Now, if you don't know how to do any of that, if you don't know what that means, please, please call our team down here at A1RV. We always put safety before the sale, just like I'm doing right now. If you can't tow it, we're not gonna ship it out on your truck. We're not gonna put you in a dangerous situation. And if you can tow it, we're happy to dig into more information to see if this is the right one for you or find another RV that does work. But we'll make sure it's right before we just send you along your merry way. I, the last thing I wanna see, and I mean the last thing, is some social media post where, hey, guys, pray for my cousin. He's in the hospital because he, uh, you know, that place down there in Coldwater sold him too big of an RV. He ended up in the ditch. I don't want that. You don't want that. And let's proactively avoid that together, shall we? Now, there's almost two stories going on on this roof. The RV looks like it's been stored for a little bit, and the roof kind of shows that. The roof needs cleaning. Here's the thing, though. Everything below that, if you can just look past that for a moment, you look at every single seal around every single fixture up here. They have all, within the last year, been fully covered and protected. This RV has been, like I said, proactively, not reactively maintained. An ounce of prevention, worth a pound of cure. So it needs a cleaning, no big deal. If that's stuff you're looking for, if you're interested in that, we can have our team down at Halet RV run this through the wash bay. That's just, it's kind of like if you're buying a house, guys. This is Advantage One RV. This is where we sell RVs on behalf of the owners. Halet RV down the street, where we actually own the campers, uh, a little bit different organization, but we can work together to get things done for you. So like if you see something down here, and kind of like if, think of this place almost like real estate, where every one of these RVs almost represents a different house. The difference is all the houses are in one spot. Well, just like a house, you can write up stipulations. And you say, tell you what, I'd love to buy that Cougar if you folks can clean it. Now we can do that, but we need to get a cleaning quote from our team down at Halet RV because naturally they need to be compensated for their time. 
but it's no different than anything else. Like if you're looking at a house and it had a faulty light socket, you could say, I'll buy it as long as someone gets that light socket address. These are things we can consider and look at and, and talk about. So keep that in mind. Remember that just because an RV is sitting one way right now doesn't mean that's the only way it ever has to be. And it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to do all the work to take care of it. So the worst I can say about this RV, it's got a couple flaky stickers and the roof needs cleaning. Big deal. Those are not major structural leak issues. And compared to the new RV money that you're not spending here, I think that's fair. So if that sounds good to you, give us a call. And if it doesn't, obviously, we've got plenty of other things for you to look at between A1 and Halet RV's inventory pool. We'll get you camping, guys. Give our team a call. Let us know what you need. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and have an A1 day, everyone.